Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. You know, we often remember the heroic, gallant deeds of soldiers and officers during the Civil War period. The Medal of Honor recognizing gallantry for soldiers who captured the flag, rallied the troops, captured the enemy, all sorts of deeds. And it's fitting that we remember them. I want to remember an individual tonight who never received the Medal of Honor, but was involved in a gallant act of his own making that is most memorable and most unusual, partly because he's a member of the Signal Corps. The Signal Corps are the long-range communicators of the Army, they send messages by flag, keeping senior commanders informed of what's going on with the troops, helping them to make intelligence, giving them the intelligence that they need to make sometimes hard, difficult decisions. So Davis Eugene Castle, the officer pictured here, is one of those members of the Signal Corps. He was born in New York moved to Indiana at a young age, and went to work on the railroads. This is all before the Civil War. In 1861, after the war began, he joined the 19th Indiana Infantry as a first lieutenant. For those of you who are students of the Civil War, you know that the 19th Indiana was part of the Iron Brigade. Well, Castle did not spend a long time in the 19th. Early in 1862, he cast his lot with the Signal Corps, which was really in its infancy. As the armies were growing in size and being brigade level and division level and corps level, really unprecedented in American history, the need for communications between these large bodies of troops was becoming more and more critical to the generals who were commanding. And so Castle goes into this new organization. He learns how to send signals. He learns how to manage a team of signal corpsmen and participates really in the birth of the signal corps. He proves himself really good at what he does. And he's promoted to captain during the Peninsula Campaign in Chancellorsville, performs very well. It's at Gettysburg where he really makes history. He's mentioned by his superior officer and others for a particular act that occurs on July 3rd of 1863 when Pickett's Charge begins the bombardment leading up to Pickett's Charge as those Confederate shells are coming over the Union lines and they're firing a bit too far. The range is a bit too deep. Some of those shot and shell are landing around the headquarters of the commander of the Union Army of the Potomac, George G. Meade. Eventually, the shells are coming too close for comfort, and Meade and his staff evacuate their headquarters. Along with Meade and his staff also goes the members of the Signal Corps, a detachment commanded by, you guessed it, Captain Castle. Now, Castle is pretty much on his own at this point, doesn't really have a way to send signals because all of the folks in this detachment have gone, all the generals have gone, they moved over to another headquarters where it was a bit safer, and yet the information he was receiving, what he was seeing, where he was, was critically important to communicate. He had some messages that he still needed to send on top of that. So what did he do? No, well, he made his own flag so that he could send his signals. How did he make that flag? He found a pole and he found an old bed sheet and he rigged it up and he made his flag. And with that flag, in the middle of all the shot and shell raining down from the Confederate side during the lead up to Pickett's charge, he was able, Castle was able, to send the critical messages and other information to General Meade and other commanders to help them understand what was going on. 
Now, that's a particular act of gallantry. And as I mentioned, it got him significant amount of attention in the after action reports written by his commanding officer. And that commanding officer is named Lemuel Norton. And I want to read what Norton had to say, his description of what Captain Castle did. He writes, quotes, I take pleasure in still further mentioning Captain D.E. Castle of this Corps, that's a signal corps, for distinguished gallantry and close attention to duty under most trying circumstances. On July 3rd, when the enemy made their furious attack upon our center at Gettysburg, Captain Castle occupied a signal station at General Meade's headquarters near Cemetery Hill and remained there on duty after all others had been driven away. His flagmen had also left with his signal equipments under the impression that their officer had gone with the rest. Having occasion to send a couple of important messages to the general commanding, then at General Slocum's headquarters, and General Henry Slocum is one of Meade's subordinates, Captain Castle quickly cut a pole extemporized a signal flag from a bedsheet procured nearby and sent his dispatches through under a most galling fire. Amazing to have that keen sightedness and good judgment to stay on the job when everyone else had left is quite unusual. And yet Castle, in that moment, the decision he made was for the betterment of the commanding officer, his commanding officer, and of course the commanding officer of the Army of the Potomac, General Meade. So it's not the end of Castle's career. He continues on with the Signal Corps for about another year or so. And at that point, the term, his term of enlistment has ended and he decides that he has given his service to the country and it's time to get back to life. So as the war is beginning to close, he makes his exit from the army. He becomes a civil servant in Washington, D.C., and he goes to work for the General Land Office. Today, it's part of the Bureau of Land Management. And if you can imagine back in the 1860s, when the country was still growing and territories or turning into states, the general land office was quite a popular place to be, and you needed good men and good women, clerks and others, officials, to be able to process all the files and all the claims and make sure that the government was doing what they needed to do to get the land satisfied and settled in the right ways. So that was his life, so he's contributing after the war for the government, during the war with the Signal Corps, and before the war on the railroads in Indiana. He continues on, and he lives until 1886, dying at a relatively young age of 50. But today, we're remembering Captain Castle for a most heroic deed at the Battle of Gettysburg on July 3rd, 1863. Thanks for listening.